Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the 16th century, where information is now to be suppressed that they do not want you to see. The Heartbeat of the Sun by Valentina Zarkova and her team with Shepard, Popova, and Zarkov. They're using solar dynamo effects, mapping it out into a wave pattern so you can clearly see when this next grand solar minimum is commencing, and it is started. After the paper was released, they were attacked by their critics, i.e. the IPCC, which tried to lobby the Royal Astronomical Society to have this paper deleted from publication, removing it from our eyes, from you and I, not allowed to access this paper. There's something so dangerous inside this paper, they do not want you to see it. Using sunspot count with the overall prediction of declines coming right now. This is not the only research that shows this. Dr. Abutsimov from Pukovo Astronomical Observatory showing the same. John Casey showing the same. Tree ring data forecasting showing the same. Carl Landscheid angular momentum of the gas giants showing the same. I put this together to show you the exact planetary geometry based on Landscheid's work. Exactly the same. It's all starting right now and they're trying to hide the fact from you. As the old adage says, history repeats. And when we go back to the 1600s, not only are we repeating a grand solar minimum, but we're repeating the suppression of information that has come out from science. In the 1600s, it was the church. And now the new overseers of information to be suppressed or released, the IPCC, coming out asking that this information, the heartbeat of the sun, computer-generated models showing when the grand solar minimums are occurring by Valentina Zarkova, Shepard, Popova, Zarkov, be removed from your eyes and be removed from the internet and be removed from publication. They show a wave pattern based on amplitudes of dynamo waves in the sun. The magnetic flux causes these waves, clearly showing when these solar minimums come and when they go. There have been long-term cycles talked about since the 1870s. One of the periods talked about was the 205-year cycle. John Casey pegs it at 207 years. That's pretty close based on the earlier works coming out by Klo in the 1870s. Today's work, Zarkova and her team find it corresponding to a period of 350 to 400 years in the amplitude of the waves. Depending on how quickly they occur, that's the intensity of the grand solar minimum. These are the two wave patterns in question. Pegged at solar cycle 25 is when the grand solar minimum begins. We are at the end of solar cycle 24 right now. We are descending into this grand solar minimum. It is commencing right now. All the strange weather you're seeing on the planet, the floods, the heat waves, everything is related to this as our atmosphere undulates because of the cosmic ray influences along with our sun's decreased activity state. A bit closer up here for you. And based on this information, the coolest of the cycle is going to come in solar cycle 26, which is a little bit after 2035, putting the coldest period at 2040. After that period of solar cycle 26, it'll start to rebound and get a little warmer in the 2050s. I zoomed that very section out so you can see the commencement is 2017, the drop off in the wave. The bottom of the first cooling period will occur in 2024. How quickly they were jumped on and trying to have this information removed. It must be so correct. There's something so dangerous in this information that the IPCC and its minions that it controls put pressure to have the Royal Astronomical Society remove this publication. That is frightening in this day and age. I thought it was supposed to be so modern in 2016 and so advanced and so free thinking and so open minded. Yet yeah, we're right back in the 1600s again. The team's research shows you this wave pattern here going out in a graph so you can clearly see the downtrend. And when you take a look at the hemispheric butterfly pattern sunspots, you can see that it's matching back up with something in the late 1800s. So you might ask yourself, why are we breaking all these 120, 130 year cold records? Well, when you clearly see the information pattern matching something from the 1870s, that goes right back into the 130 year, the 120 year, the 140 year cold record breaking. 
with rains as well, with snows, with temperatures. Dr. Abutsimov from the Pulkovo Astronomical Observatory in Russia also shows the same drop-off at the exact same time. This chart here includes the total solar irradiance, which means that that UV coming from the sun is a natural protector against blight and mold on our crops. When it gets wetter because of these grand solar minimum events, decreases in the UV, we're going to lose even more crops because of mold and blight. Some Finnish scientists here put out a forecast based on tree ring data, and look how much that matches right up with maximum cooling at 2040. Jumping over to Theodore Landscheidt's work, using the four gas giants in different alignments, the magnetic perturbations also send out a distinct wave pattern that can be measured into the future and back in time. Just for an example, 286 is on the left at the minus 35 degrees, and the right amplitude wave pattern is 30 degrees off Saturn in the 1470s. And when you start to match these up, here is the pattern. The yellow boxes are grand solar minimums. Let's take it a step further. The angular momentum of Jupiter and Saturn cycling. When you get the overlaps in the magnetics from the orbits, we can easily see yellow boxes, grand solar minimums forecast starting right now. So based on Landscheidt's work, I use solar system scope and I put these on a visual form so you can clearly see the planetary geometry, how these are lining up. The top pair is 79 AD and 89 AD. The bottom pair is 2024 to 2034. Notice how similar those are. And Valentina, I would ask you, can you run your model back to 79 AD? And I think you're gonna find an exact match with what's happening and the way the wave pattern tapers out for our current grand solar minimum. All these things are based on the exact same facts that they're trying to hide from you right now. This year is not gonna be the warmest year ever. And when the bottom drops out on the temperatures beginning in 2017 with the intensification of the La Nina, how are they gonna explain that? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And if you like this kind of research, consider jumping over to Patreon to support my work. You can find me at Adapt2030. And I do want to say thank you again for helping me reach the 10,000 mark in my subscriber count. Really helps me know that I'm on the right track with this type of information.